So this is what a few composition studies looks like um, after I'm done with it. Over on the right, you'll see the first part of the process, and that's all the thumbnails. And the thumbnail is basically like about a business card size sketch with real rough shapes. And then what I like to do is split the foreground, middle ground, and background apart into different little layers, and I can stack them up and then recombine them into what I think might be an interesting composition. The most basic composition you'll encounter is called the rule of thirds composition, and basically it has to do with the intersection points of a grid made out of thirds. Here's an example. You might do a landscape and your horizon might be on the bottom third. You might break that up by using a diagonal or using overlapping diagonal lines, and that is usually pretty effective. You might use the upper third and do the same sort of thing, and that will emphasize what's on the ground. So it depends on what you want to do. Another great one is the 50-50 figure ground relationship. So if you think of it as a, you know, a portrait or something, the portrait takes up about 50% of the space, and the background takes up the other 50%. Almost any letter or geometric shape can be made into a compositional type and you'll see these all over the place. L-shape, U-shape, triangle, and X patterns are always, you know, very prevalent in art. And when you're sketching from the old masters, you want to look for these particular archetypes. And I like to use um, little overlapping shapes to kind of better understand these sort of things because that's how you're going to wind up using them. Um, so any kind of overlap that you use with these compositional uh, archetypes is going to increase the sophistication of your compositions. So when you go to copy from the masters, you're kind of reverse engineering their process and adding their compositional eye to yours. So you're going to look for basic shapes and basic tones and keep it very simple. You don't want to copy every little thing. Now there are times when you would want to copy more specifically, but when you're studying composition, that's not what you're after. You're just after the specific way that they broke this image down into two-dimensional shapes on a canvas or a piece of paper. Um, and I always like to add tone to these and not just shapes because the way that the old masters tended to use value, such as Van Gogh here, can be really sophisticated and can be very different from what's emphasized in the overall shapes. Um, this one's sketched from a landscape by Gustave Courbet, and he would synthesize landscapes. So this landscape never really necessarily existed. So he was composing as he saw fit based on what he saw in the environment. And so you're kind of reverse engineering what was going on in his head to make an effective landscape out of areas that maybe weren't as effective um, for his compositions and when you do this these sort of tone breakdowns you're not going super specific you just want general sort of areas of tone so if there's a in George Bellows there's always a lot of crowds or random people standing around um, maybe some horses you're kind of putting a tone over that whole area rather than um, breaking down into specifics so that little blob on the right there is just a bunch of people but they operate together as that blob. And this works for abstraction too. This one's based on Tama Abs, and she makes 30 by 40 centimeter paintings um, without any kind of reference and just uses her knowledge of composition and overlap to create some really interesting paintings. And that composition can be then taken and used for something else. You could use this as a compositional archetype for something more realistic. Um, that's totally possible and it's worth studying a whole variety of uh, masters uh, to program good compositions into your hand.